I hope you've been practicing getting better at softening the organs of perception because this initial rush of allowing demands that without going towards sleep, your organs of perception start to let go. So the skin on your forehead and temples, because we're trying to surround the eyes with the sensation of relief. <clears throat> Even there's a sense of like the eye, you know, close your eyes from top to bottom if you're comfortable, but of the eyes, kind of the sense of them sinking towards the cheekbones and down. And then the lips together, teeth slightly apart because you want to be um, the inside of your mouth like a, a calm pond, but not static. So it's calm, so it's receptive, right? Because right now, and then you're trying to soften the base of your tongue and even get to your inner ear because you're trying to make a, the more calm and in some ways passive your brain can become, the more receptive to the world your consciousness becomes, which is very paradoxical actually. So you're letting something wash out on exhalation. And then on this next inhalation, feel it more as a spark of a beginning of an expansion. So for me, sometimes I try to exhale into my bones <clears throat> and inhale into my lungs and into the rise. And then see on the exhalation, how your shoulder blades, if it were to follow the exhalation, they might descend slightly on the down. And on the inhalation, your chest might slightly rise. So there's, there's this, right, going on here. Because in a second, you're gonna want asana to help that get more, even more tangible. So you're exhaling. So I talk a lot about getting pressed in on the inner edge of each shoulder blades, exhaling from the back ribs, because you're trying to get that dropping. So the rise, but it's not just on the front body. And now become more aware of your sitting bones and your feet to provide your mind with more of a base so it doesn't have to interfere with your breath as much. So you're aware of your breath without trying to interfere with your breath. So as soon as I exhale down into my base, my sitting bones and my feet, I also get this slight rise, which then the inhalation picks up and expands. So even on exhalation, there's a descending and a lengthening. And then the inhalation is an expansion, but you stay away, aware of your base. And then you exhale and the cycle repeats. Now add more exertion. So more consciously hit down with your sitting bones, lift up your lower abdomen and press down through the inner heels, but then make sure it's a connected action from your inner groin to your inner knee to your inner heel. So you're creating more refinement to the shape of your vessel, right? The, the stability that the body provides. So the mind doesn't have to be in charge of everything. Very little trouble can happen. 
Stay alert on each side of your mid back, which would be about your kidneys, a little bit lower than that. Try to create whatever this means to you, a sense of alert stillness. Awake stillness. Honor what's around you with your alertness. Don't make it about you. Good. And then release. Notice what happens when you release that kind of attention, right? And then reassert it by lifting your sternum and dropping your chin. So there's a container enhances again. And hopefully as soon as you do that container, you go down to your sitting bones and connect to your feet. Like it becomes one. It becomes one because you're aware of the differences The feet, the city moons, the chest, the chin, the breath into each lung, each sitting bone, awareness of each sitting bone, each foot. Because of the differentiation, the one, the unity emerges. Breathe into that. Raise your head up with closed eyes, open your eyes. So <clears throat> a lot of times in my past, <clears throat> I've tried, I've gotten too serious about the inward part. So I always try to make jokes and stuff and try to be a little bit funny because if I make the inward dimension, I wanna be in awe of it, right? I wanna always be curious about it, but I don't want it just to be serious. Because if it's too serious, my mind will find a way not to go there, right? Always, right? So this idea of, of the warm-up part where we start to like move around a little bit and get this sense of the whole body and more of the blood flowing, to me, the lightness that comes with not having my body feel so grunt, so like this, is actually feels fun, right? So I want to consciously let kind of the stretching beginning, the more just movement, create a sense of lightness, right? As opposed to just that serious because, but I know the serious is there. So again, I'm just going to go back a little bit and forth. So I'm just changing gravity again. See, like, especially on a Monday, like you're trying to figure out how to make sure you have your body for the whole week, right? Like this isn't just about today. It's about what's the week going to be like, right? And then over to the side again. So again, I just, I like, like do it. It's like cracking your knuckles before you play the piano. Although I never played the piano, so I don't even know what that means, right? But I'm just like, I sometimes pretend that I do certain things and then back again to crack my knuckles before I start writing, right? But what cracking my knuckles means depends on the day, right? So I just like, so... And then be in the center and here comes a little bit of like, feel the center of your chest and turn your head. So put your, your right hand on your chest, right? And then turn your head to the left and then back and then switch hands, right? What, that, what is the hand achieving, right? It allows my mind not to just be aware of my neck and then I'm gonna switch again. I'm actually creating a reference point so the movement doesn't have to just be in my neck, in my head, 
right? So I'm just going back and forth, right? And I'm actually going to make this a rhythm. I thought I might even put a little bit of a, a little bit of shake and bake in it, right? When I start to lean up, do a little bit of a back bend, right? So I'm going back and forth, creating extra bass. Do that a couple more times. And then back to center. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put my hand, again, I'm gonna keep just turning my head, but now I'm gonna add more bass <clears throat> through my legs. Because remember, especially if you sit a lot, the, so I'm gonna take put my right hand on my right knee and then just turn a little bit. And then I'm not gonna worry and then switch. I'm gonna turn. So I'm, I've got my hands. So I'm just trying to increase the bass, right? And not making it like a big, huge yoga pose or a big twist. I'm just going back and forth, right? Because I want that lightness. And then I'm going to go back over my chair again and come forward, right? <clears throat> and then lean over again. And without all the seriousness that I usually teach, I make space in my back, feel my legs, make sure my legs are actually engaged where I'm, my subtle perception is including my whole body, right? <clears throat> and then, right, and then lift up, right? So you let that hang be in there because that, that space in your low back is actually one of the keys to feeling better. <clears throat> and I'm going back and forth. <clears throat> and then just kind of around and then Again, I'm gonna go put my right hand on my knee and just quickly just turn and make it more rhythmic, right? So I'm actually grounding on the inside edge of my leg and turning a little bit, but without thinking about it as a big twist. And I'm just trying to get it and then back over and then forward. And then the thing what's harder for me on a Monday is to get my legs more. So I'm gonna take my legs, the pedals and open them up. Again, we're not trying to do much quote yoga we're just trying to feel more so i'm spreading my knees apart for me because i can't activate it i'm pushing against my knees but if i want all of you to do that a little bit so the groin actually gets gets like some action without it having to exert right and then i'm going to from this just do a quick little twist and, I, and switch hands so we're going from side to side trying to make it be slightly more rhythmic right <clears throat> I'm just trying to inhabit more and more space. <clears throat> and what's interesting, <laughs> right, for me at least, and then come forward again and come back. <clears throat> if I just let my focus be mental, like that's why a lot of people when they're focusing, they furrow their brow. I'm listening really hard and it's on my face. Right. Typically, if I just mentally focus, I narrow my field of awareness. But in yoga, focus is going to include your body. So the sensation of distribution and of lightness, of feeling the whole vessel, right? And like, so now I want to either more, more consciously move one knee forward and one hip back. <clears throat> right. So this, this distribution, I'm going to go forward here with the shoulder and a hip and then forward here, and then forward here, All right? And then I'm gonna add, I'm gonna go forward with my right knee and pull back with my left hip, All right? And then I'm gonna do it the same thing. Oh man, can you tell which way? Like I don't do this side nearly as well. Like I can put my, my right hip, my left hip forward, but not my <clears throat> right knee back. So I'm just gonna like notice stuff like that and go back and forth. Right, so I'm just, so I'm actually grabbing my wheelchair, the seat of my chair, and getting more leverage and grounding so I can feel more of myself moving, right? And again, we're going for lightness, not for, for precision, right? <clears throat> so I'm just going back and forth and feeling it. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna spread my legs again. And then I'm grabbing for my wheelchair, I'm grabbing my footrest, but I'm, and I'm going back and forth again, but going from side to side. So I'm getting my, well, the hemispheres of my brain are trying to coordinate, but I don't even need to know that. I just need to move, right? From side to side and make it be rhythm. 
right? So now what I'm doing now on this next one is like, I'll go, this is because I'm paralyzed, it feels good. I'm going to pretend I don't want to stand up, right? So I'm, I'm coming up with my spine as I'm turning to the right, right? And then I'm leaving. And then I'm leaning forward and coming up when I go to the left, right? And I'm actually getting this feeling of fullness, right? Of my whole body beat participating in the movement. I'm even double pumping here. I'm like, well, one, two, I'm actually getting the sense of movement in my spine, right? The rhythm of it. And then I'm gonna sit for a second in the center and put my hands on my knees and ground because that was actually pretty active. I can feel the changes, right? So now I'm gonna start thinking a little bit more about, about making this action that seems so just like movement a little deeper. So I'm gonna grab and go lean forward like I'm gonna stand up and rise up or go down with my feet. And now I'm gonna make sure I'm aware of the back side of my sternum as I do it. So that forces some inward, right? Right, <clears throat> and then release. And so all this extra awareness needs not to get heavy. That's why we're doing it in rhythm, right? And then again, go back and forth and get deeper into your experience, but feel it in rhythm, right? Back and forth. So we're just trying to get this more open. Right, and this extra action hopefully is getting your groins a little bit more open, right? <clears throat> and then release and put your legs back on the chair. Now, I can tell a lot of this warm up on my body has basically been from my knees up. So, some of you have been able to feel your feet the whole time. I don't feel my feet the whole time. So, if you can't pick, I'm going to pick up one leg. <clears throat> And I'm going to grab my foot just to remind myself that I have feet. If you can't pick up your leg and it's too much of a struggle, just like push down your left foot into the floor and remind yourself of the calming. Like, so I'm calming myself down by grabbing my foot. I'm remembering that there's this other layer that's more grounded. Right? And then I'm going to release and change feet. One of the things that I think I'm about to teach this whole week, new yoga teachers or yoga teachers that want to learn about mind body Susan's approach to adaptive yoga, I'm doing that all week, is that one of the things I'm going to try to get across to them is how important, especially when you're teaching chair classes, right? But how important it is to help people explore the sensation of grounding. So by grabbing my feet right now, I'm just trying to ground because the grounding is gonna help me lift my chest. If I don't have a sense of my base and then put your feet down, if I don't have a, a deepened sense of my base, when I go to lift my chest, I'm just gonna lift from here up. So now I'm gonna push in on my knees and have this grounding sensation through my legs and lift the chest. So for those of you that can move, right, and aren't paralyzed, which is most of you, Right? When I say ground your legs, there's a, a relief to it. Okay, so, so the base in a pose um, is much more subtle than typically traditional students understand. And I mean by traditional, they don't live with a condition, right? That they, um, they think it's about muscular and pressure, but there's a whole other layer to the base that is um, softer and more like the energy of centering, right? But it's part of your base. And so after I've moved around a little bit, I'm trying to put my hands on my knees and get that sensation of grounding to help the lightness fill my chest, as opposed to do this and make it physical. So this is like one of the advantages I think that all of you get over a quote traditional student is that, that your poses are having to, to include this subtler level sooner, right? And what I'm trying to do with, and then release, what I'm trying to get you to get with the warm up is that there's a lightness that you wanna to create to start your practice. So now I want you to come forward, either put your hands on the table or on your thighs, right? But again, because you know the last couple of months, I'm really trying to get you to get space in your low back. 
right? Because I know from how much yoga I've done that um, graceful space in your low back helps the energy flow through the whole body, especially if you sit a lot, right? So I'm trying to get this elongation and now I'm gonna use my awareness and my effort. So I, just by leaning forward and grounding my forearms, I'm getting some space. Now I'm gonna add asana. I'm gonna hit down through my sitting bones and lift up through my chest, but I don't want the focus to be lifting my chest or grounding my sitting bones. I wanna see what I receive when I hit my sitting bones down and I lift my chest, right? So I'm actually trying to become more aware of the changes, right? And if my mind is overactive, I'm only gonna hear the grounding of the sitting bones and the lifting of the chest. I'm not gonna hear the spaces between, right? And that's what you're looking for because those are the spaces that are gonna help your breathing, in my opinion, right? So I'm just taking some time to feel the length in my back. And then of course, instead of just hitting your sitting bones in a straight line back into your seat, a very typical instruction I give you is to broaden across your very low back, across your sacrum. But when you broaden across your sacrum, don't you also broaden across your chest, front and back, right? All that's actually going on, right? So you're broadening, and then you lift your chest again more gracefully and you make a horizontal extension intersect with a vertical in, in extension up through the chest. And you ground your forearms, you ground this awareness for your mind so it feels safe and you breathe into this more full bodied activation with your torso. Your torso is being, you know, you're, you're grounding across the, you're broadening across the sacrum, hitting the city bones down, lifting to the chest broadening across the collarbones, across the back ribs, and you're taking a breath. And trying to fill the whole vessel using your body as the train tracks. So your breath can touch more spaces. Good, and then release. <clears throat> and then come back up. Now I'm gonna sit up and I'm now Right away, when I, when I sit vertical, I start to feel the compression in my back, right? So I had it lengthened here, but now <clears throat> I want you to try to bring, bring the lean forward again and lengthen your back. I'll do it on my forearms this time. <clears throat> so I'm trying to get an extension on the back, a grounding in the legs, right? So I'm feeling that. And then I'm broadening across the sacrum, I'm lifting the sternum, I'm broadening across the shoulders, I'm dropping my shoulder blades down all of the things and I'm you you know and I, I, right now I'm pushing on my legs with my forearms so I'm getting an even increased sense of the base in the pose and I'm breathing so this feeling of extension I'm going to try to hold on to with my memory as I sit up straight try to keep the spine elongated right so you never do the typical collapse what I just did right there right you elongate and you keep it long. So, you, so now come back forward. And did you keep it as long as you could have? Probably not. Now keeping your spine long in your low back can't just be done from your neck. Now you gotta feel the space, keep it inflated. So as I sit back up, I'm trying to keep my low back elongated and inflated. And then from here, I want you to take a couple breaths into a more elongated, low back and mid back. And as you have that, gently remind your mind that you have your inner heels and your sitting bones. So you're trying to keep the spaces between your sitting bones, your, your inner heels, your sitting bones and your chest, you're trying to keep them expanded. And then let your breath touch in you. Right. Your body also helps you breathe. Good, and then, and then release. <clears throat> so the, I, one of the things I, I, like, I like in terms of freedom, so this, when I, everyone lift up again, right? So you're letting your low back lengthen, right? If I wanna stay connected to the space around me, which I do in general in my whole life, right? I need to be receptive. 
So watch and then drop your chest and watch how the world around you, the integration of the space in the room changes when your chest is dropped. So I'm gonna lift back up, right? Get that elongation in my spine, trying to keep it, keep the elongation, keep the chest lifted and keep feeling the touch of the room on the outline of my body. The touch of the room on the outline of my body while keeping my sitting bones refined and alert, my chest refined and alert, my inner heels refined and alert. This is the core channel that all the poses come through. This type of alertness. Good, and then release. So now as you lean over, again, trying to change gravity, and lean over to the right. And now I want you, this is not how you do yoga. So you're leaning over to the right, trying to make it more, slightly more open and physical, bring your right knee forward, your left hip back. Now this is not how you do the pose, right? Left hip forward, right hip forward, left hip back, and open your chest, right? And just feel that. And then release. Now we're gonna do it again, but I want you to keep the feeling of being open without pushing one knee out and one hip back. So without as much. So you're coming over, you're getting this sense of openness, but there's an inward rhythm in, in the twist that comes from not just physically moving your knee forward and your hip back, but it's deeper than that, where you're grounding and opening. So maybe the hip comes back a little bit, the left hip, and maybe the right knee comes forward a little bit, but you're trying to open here. Now, for me, I can feel this side of my rib cage better, but not the lower side of my rib cage as much. So I'm gonna elongate the lower side of my rib cage. So I'm taking your, take your left hand, push on your rib cage here, push it in towards your spine, find the lower side of your rib cage, and try to breathe into that when you're in this position. Remember, the energy that the yogis are fundamentally trying to communicate is in the spine. Good, and then come on up. So this energy that comes through our central nervous system, which makes our brain even possible, is actually the, the subtlety of that is what's trying to be revealed in the yoga pose. Right, and asana allows you to feel it. So now you're gonna go the other way. And remember, at first we're gonna take the left knee forward and the right hip back. So you're exaggerating the physicalness of the openness of the spine, right? And you're just feeling that, right? And trying to like, I'm making it like rhythmic here. So I'm going back and forth a few times. Because my spine, I want my spine to be more engaged in everything I do. And then come back to center, come up again. Yeah. And then come over again. And now as the left knee comes forward, right it comes back, don't do it as physically. Do it more near the core. Open the chest, right? And now again, I don't collapse on this side as much on my, on my left side. Right? But I'm watching that. And then come on up, be in the center. I'm gonna do it one more time. So on my body, this side, because I'm already collapsed on this side with my scoliosis, I won't get as much drama over it. Right? So I'm gonna take my hand up here, but you might be just the opposite of me. Right? Push on your rib cage. Feel that extra reference. Let Open up by taking your left knee slightly forward, right hip slightly back. Open and feel grounded from this connection here. Mm -hmm. Good, and open and come on up, release. So <clears throat> when I asked you in the beginning of class to bring alert stillness to your kidneys, right? It's about right here while I was just asking you to push on your rib cage, right? That's right. So this next time when we do the same thing, we go on each side, <coughs> on each side. So when it gets pushed in, 
I don't want you to get too caught up in what's being pushed in. I want you to feel boundary around this alert stillness that I want in your in your mid back, right? So lean over to the to the right. So again, I'm letting the 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 right hip come slightly forward, but not really in movement. I'm opening up, and so I tend to leak energy out this way. So for me, pushing here has a lot of volume. It's good. Well, volumes and subtle gets relief, right? But now I'm using my inward awareness to feel in my mid back a depth and alertness, and then keeping that alertness in mind. I want to hit down through my sitting bones, down through my feet. Now I'm going to breathe. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to then come on back up. I'm just trying to show, see standing poses in general for a traditional student as changing the position of the spine in, rela in relationship to the legs and making you learn when you're off balance, right? So you're gonna go the other way. And again, I want the, 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 the left hip to come slightly forward. This right knee, the left knee, part of the left knee, left knee, right hip back and I'm opening up. Then I'm putting my hand here. You're trying to hit down through my sitting bone, lift up to the chest. And then let my hand find that place, my kidneys, quote, to become more alert and still as the rest of my pose becomes. And take a couple of breaths. Good. And then release and come on back to center. So there's this line that I, I read early on in my yoga practice, so nearly 30 years ago, um, in Tree of Yoga, and I've said this line before, um, that the intersection of the, of the, you know, depending on which quote you look at, spiritual body, subtle body, right? The subtle body um, intersects, the intersection of the spiritual body with the physiological body or the physical body occurs at the diaphragm. Right, which kind of makes sense and makes it obvious why breathing would be central in so many types of yoga, right? Is that you're trying to you're trying to get this idea that here, so take a hand on each side of your rib cage, it's about the your bottom floating rib, right? And let there be a ground, like I'm pushing in with my thumb and index fingers or whatever, or it could be the back of your hands, could be whatever. But I'm trying to like by pushing in, I'm trying to calm down my diaphragm. So I'm not just trying to push against it. I'm trying to let that, that be a calming energy. Now, this is about when I push here, the quiet I feel on each side of my spine and my mid back is where I meant your kidneys to be. Right? Where, where like, the, and so I'm just trying to like think about with this extra reference on my rib cage. I'm trying to think, whoa. That's where alert stillness can be maintained. So I'm just feeling that and breathing into that. And then I'm going to release and then try to keep the imprint of my hands and put my hands on my knees and push in on my knees, lifting my chest like you've done before, but remembering the feeling on the rib cage and keeping alert stillness there. Now, right away to me, it reveals which side of my back I'm not breathing well as well into. Because I let my diaphragm or my mind got, or my, di look, my diaphragm got located from my mind by my touch. And I can feel where I'm not breathing as well. Right? So before we start doing side to side poses, which is really gonna challenge that before we continue to do those poses. I want to feel the equanimity or the equality from side to side. So now I'm gonna go back to a, 
another like coming forward again, either under the table or not. And I'm gonna, hopefully you identify the place along your own spine that didn't have as much light in it or life in it, or I don't even know what the word would be, but I hope you know what, what an experience I'm pointing to. And I'm gonna see if I can keep it lit with alertness, with an inward awareness. And then I'm going to notice my breath. Now I'm going to be aware of my sitting bones. Maybe gently press them down to find that sp those spots that I'm not as alert alerted. And then I'm going to feel each foot on the floor. And the grounding I have in my hand, arms or forearms. And I'm going to try to use this gentle effort to help my breath distribute more fully and wholly through my entire body. Now I'm going to ground my sitting bones equally and lift my chest and activate even more, right? So now I'm letting asana, the effort to increase, but I'm trying to keep the whole body awareness as the foundation of my effort. Because what happens in more complicated yoga poses is that your base gets compromised under the, under the performance of the action. Good, and then release. And fundamentally, I know from 30 years of yoga is that my base, I have to work way harder to have my base than a walking around person, right? <clears throat> so now, put, my, put your hands on your knees. You're trying to find right away this inward, it's nonverbal, it's like a, it's not an effort, it's awareness of the whole vessel, which is part of why I, I do a lot of things like with joint awareness. So as you sit here in symmetry, let, have your brain feel where your ankles are, your knees are, your hips are, each side of your rib cage, each shoulder, each side of your neck, between your ear and your neck and then release. So I did that from the body part. Now I want you to do it from a slightly different direction. I want you to feel each side of where the alert stillness is supposed to be, right? So open that each side of your back. And then from there, be more aware of each ankle, each knee, each hip, each shoulder, and each side of your head. But let it come from this quiet place in your mid back. Take a couple of breaths. Now your ability to feel a place like on each side of your back. At first, if you're a newer student, you're gonna think you're just imagining it. That's part of the, that's why yoga takes time. Eventually you'll realize that you can just do it. It's not an imagination. It's not a mental projection. In fact, it's just the opposite. The sensations from that part of your spine and body are coming to your mind, not your mind to that spot. Good, and then release. So I was with a, 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 a really advanced yoga teacher, been in yoga, yoga, yoga longer than I have, like 20 years longer. And he's more of an Ashtanga practitioner, which is a student of Patavi Joyce. And he's way in, he was, his name is Richard Freeman, and he's way into, um, the mythology of it all, right? Tells great stories and stuff. And he said one time to me when we we're talking about stuff like this, we're at a, a yoga journal conference and he said, he leaned in and he talks like he's, he's a little bit, he kind of talks like this. He's done a lot of meditation for like 50 years. So he's always like this. He says, Matt, don't you know that the thousand heads of yoga come out of T12? T12 is the bottom rib cage. Basically, it's a little bit lower. Then in all of the mythology, if you look at the drawings of like Hamanan and ones that have more than one arms, they're always coming out of T12, right? This place where Bikis Iyengar 
is saying is the intersection of the physiological body and the subtle body, right? This place. So when I was asking, and this is like what being passed down through story, when I said, be alert on each side of where, you're, where you were just touching, and then I asked you from there to feel where your feet are, right? Feel where your sitting bones are, right? This is like the lineage talking down to you from a long time back trying to say in the yogis in their exploration of the mind-body relationship, they find this part of your spine to be the source of a lot of movement. So I'm gonna breathe into that. Do I think it's literally true? I have no idea what literally even means here, right? But I'm gonna trust. Now with this awareness, come over to the right again, Put your hand here again, push in, and use this reference to find where your feet are, to find where your sitting bones are. Lower your center of gravity from your head to your mid spine in movement, right? And then take the arm up. Take a breath. Good, and then back down. I'm gonna push into this part of my rib cage. I'm going to let it help me fill the vessel on this subtle level because the intersection, I'm pushing the water, the subtle water that's leaking out of this side of my spine, I'm redirecting it back into my legs. Mm -hmm. And especially because of my scoliosis, this side does a better job, right? And then back up again. Now I'm going to elongate my spine, get down through my sitting bones and stretch out through the top of my head. Good, and then release. And like I said, because of my particular back, this side's not gonna be as dramatic for me. I don't know which side that is for you. One side's gonna be louder than the other. Lean over. And remember, we're trying to have the center of the pose be a place you're not quite as used to moving from. So your mind has to be empty more. Put your hand at that part of your rib cage. Now from here, try to sink in and feel where your feet are, your ankles are, your hips, and your shoulders, and your head. Look, I just adjusted, right? I was like, I had that screwed up, right? And I'm gonna like now take a couple of breaths. Opening my chest. Now, when I release my hand, I'm looking for the change in my legs. I take the hand off. Does anyone feel the energy drop? I do. I'm going in here now. On this side, I need to push into my ribs, into my hand, not just my hand into my ribs. Because this is my shorter side. I need, I, my body needs to open here. I don't know about yours. Unless we're in person. Good. And then come on up and be in the center. And now hands on the knees, push in, articulate the femur bone, get the grounding back. And then instead of like the hard foot here, right? The, the hard or harder awareness, I want the grounding of my legs to let this inflate again, to let it be softer and more refined. And then I'm gonna try to breathe more equally into my body. And no matter if you're breathing through your mouth or your nose. Good. So then when, when I'm hanging around really advanced yogis and their stories tend to intersect. So Richard Freeman told me about the snakes because he teaches through mythology. Um, <clears throat> Mary Dunn, who's no longer alive, she died of ovarian cancer, big loss for the anger, teach, anger community, right? She told me one time, that that your legs start from right here and so do your arms that right kind of where the solar plexus is instead of thinking of your arms as starting from here try to get them to start from down in here the solar plexus right instead of thinking of your legs starting from your hips try to have them start from your solar plexus duh that's 
the T12 thing again. So two really advanced teachers are telling me that one of the source of the movement is occurring where I was telling you to put alert stillness. So now we're gonna try to do full on poses. Now think about what twists do, they kind of cover up the space, all right? So now you're gonna lean over to the right. You're gonna do all this stuff to open. You're gonna keep this awareness here. So I'm gonna remind myself to open here, to keep alert, to follow what that makes me feel. Then I'm gonna take my arm up, right? And I'm gonna combine from the shoulder through the shoulder through the arm which means for me, I've got to inflate this side body, right? I've got to make sure that's staying open, hitting down through my sitting bone, stretching out to the top of my head, feeling my feet on the floor, bringing the shoulder blade in towards the hip socket, the, the, the shoulder blades in towards the spine, keeping the right side of my body more full. And then I, I can say, oh, I, want, I can see why the yogis then made this trick in asana, and then they made another standing pose go like this, because now, all of a sudden my arm is following a different line traveling through my spine, right? So I've got to like still get this all open again, but now my arm is following more of the vertical limb through my spine, right? And then go back here and notice what happens and how your arm is now reflecting a horizontal extension across the diaphragm to help you find your legs and then go this way again and recognize what's happening in the subtle body. Breathe, good, and then release. When you start to realize the poses from the spine outward, you start to see why the poses are the poses, right? Like why the yogis said, why, why there's a difference between trick and asana and side flank pose, right? Why they would have generated poses like that. All right, so sit again, ground, so I'm putting my hands on my knees. I'm pushing and I'm trying to make sure I'm being supple and aware. So the way, instead of like doing it from my diaphragm, I told you to bring alert stillness to your kidneys. So I actually gave you a more a way to not do it as directly. Because if I'd asked you to soften your diaphragm, you wouldn't have known how to do that. Right? So I gave you a different kind of weird instruction, knowing that I was going to be at the source of asana when I asked you to do that. Right, and then you're gonna go the other way. And again, we did all this stuff to get this open. Remember the knee forward, the whatever back, this open, right? I'm gonna to touch here and help my spine be in space, especially this point through here that a whole bunch of smarter people than me are telling me it's the source of asana. It's the source of realization. I'm gonna make sure my shoulder's open, right? And then I take the arm up and recognize shoulder blade in to ground, right? But that I'm following a vertical, I mean a horizontal energy through my spine now, broadening across my sacrum too, feeling each foot on the floor, and then recognize what the yogis were creating when they did this. Now, when I go in this vertical line, guess what I get to do? I get to open better here. This is a good pose for me to do because my rib cage where my diaphragm is, can be more supple. And then I go up again and I recognize what I'm being taught there, what it means for my legs, and then going over, trying to feel the bottom side of my spine, the upper side of my spine, what grounding is. If I just let my shoulder go too far up, I screw it up. I have to drop my shoulder, lift from here, open here, feel my sitting bones, feel my legs, Good, and then come on up. <clears throat> Sit in the center. So this idea of being more aware of this part of your body makes a lot of sense, right? Because it's your diaphragm that helps you inhale and exhale, all those things, but it's not the only way to practice. I haven't usually taught a whole practice that's centered at this part of the spine. So I wouldn't just practice this way, but sit still for a second. Sink into your sitting bones, hands on your, on your knees. Listen to what your body has experienced right now. See if it has anything to teach you about being full. Remember, I believe the body teaches the mind in asana. 
The mind does not teach the body as much in asana. The mind directs the doing, the body reveals the existence. Right, so you're sitting here feeling. Now, because of the way we've been focused on the diaphragm, I wanna make sure our minds don't get stuck there for the rest of the day. So I'm gonna now release and I'm gonna come and again elongate, I'm gonna go do some of the things that we started the class with so I can let go of some of the stuff. So I don't get stuck gripping my diaphragm. Diaphragmatic injuries suck, by the way. I've had a couple of them. In fact, the surgery gave me one back in April, with my diaphragm. And it's been having its cost, right? <clears throat> so I'm elongating, so I'm taking the time to let my mind feel safe again. Remember, the kidneys are also connected to fear. You ever heard that in Eastern medicine, Eastern like acupuncture? Your kidneys are the fear saying, you know, when, when you're really scared, you sometimes feel like you have to pee or startled. Yeah, that would be the activation of that system, right? And so you're grounding. When I ask you to bring alert stillness towards your kidneys, you're coming right into where a lot of us hold some fear. So now I'm having you lean forward, ground your feet, ground your sitting bones, ground your arms on your legs or on the table create a really good base and now with a sense of relief and surrender bring alert stillness to your kidneys or allow alert stillness to the mid part of your back right by the diaphragm and then a couple of real gentle breaths into the support you're giving to a part of you where you're where often fear gets squeezed into We're preparing for Shavasana right now. Good, and then release. So I gotta say, I'm not that huge of a fan of snakes. So the image of a thousand heads of snakes coming out of T12, I have to do some work with that language because I'm not sure I wanna be Medusa's head right at my diaphragm. Right. <laughs> but the idea that there's a whole bunch of potential coming out in every direction out of this part of my spine. Don't forget, Patanjali is represented in mythology as a, as a snake, the writer of the Yoga Sutras, being the founder of yoga. But don't also forget that the same snake is used by the AMA in their logo. The American Medical Association has the same symbol coming through. So try to get past the snake part of it. Unless you love snakes, then go right into the snake part of it. Right? So practice a little bit of sym symmetry because then I'm going to ask you to get comfortable and especially relax your torso in Shavasana. All right? So then set up for Shavasana. <clears throat> I, need, I usually come forward so I can lean against the back of my chair better. Again, I try to, I have long enough arms so I can put my forearms on my legs. If you can't, maybe a pillow on your lap. I touch the, the, my fingertips or the, 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 the pads of my thumbs for subtlety, but whatever. My hands are clasped, but they're light. They're graceful and they're light. But whatever you do to prepare for Shavasana is important. So then let go. Right away, I exhale. Go towards the parasympathetic nervous system. Soften around my, the skin on my forehead. Let it drop towards my eyebrows, the temples, the jaw, the inside of the mouth. Well, I hope your torso is feeling supported. So I want you to relax your belly, to relax your throat.
Feel your breath. Don't change it. Thank your body. Thank it again. Start to bring yourself back. Slightly deeper inhalation, slightly longer exhalation. When you're ready, open your eyes. It seems too bright, close them again. And then open your eyes and choose. Let the light in. If I can let the sunlight touch the depth of my Shavasana, I'm going to have a good day that day. So this idea of when you let the light back in, and you let it touch and warm the place that I just got nourished in Shavasana without shocking that place. Because <clears throat> if the light comes in too fast, like a flashlight, then it shocks that place and it shuts down. So all these little things matter for the rest of your day, <clears throat> in my opinion. All right, everybody, you can bring your hands together. Namaste. Spirit in me, Baz the spirit in you.